Today we're gonna to talk about declining income. And so Shannon, let's, I mean, when I think of declining income, immediately it's self-employment, but it's not necessarily, it can also um, parlay over into W-2 or... Parlay, you pick words today. Hey, come on, okay. I'm flowing, let it go. Uh, <laughs> uh, but let's talk about a little bit in regards of W-2 or uh, wage earners, and then also self-employment. Yes, so declining income is something that traditionally is a problem with self-employed borrowers, so maybe we'll talk about that first. If income year over year on tax returns has declined by more than 10%, we're going to have to start asking more questions um, and can possibly eliminate our ability to use the income at all. If there's significant declines from one year to the next year, um, it looks like your income is trending down, not up, and that creates questions and problems in underwriting. So we do sometimes have opportunities to explain like significant events, but usually that's going to require additional documentation. Something as, let's say 2018 was a regular year, 2019 something extraordinary happened and you had an extraordinarily good, out of the ordinary year, and then 2020 went back to a regular year. Maybe we can support that with documentation of some kind, you know, to show that you had this one big thing happen. But traditionally speaking, declining income is an issue for self-employed borrowers. The other thing that we look at, um, depending on the time of year and right now, pretty much all the time, because we're still on some of these COVID guidelines, but is a year-to-date profit and loss statement for self-employed borrowers. Um, can be very tricky for people, especially people who don't do their books until the end of the year. So we're looking to make sure that your income is not declining or increasing is always fine. Um, so when you're putting together profit and losses, you know, keep that in mind that that's what we're looking for um, so that you're, you know, reporting everything accurately, not just throwing numbers together based upon what you have in little tiny snippets yeah, sitting there. around your desk, right? Those things are very important. Um, so that is something to consider for self-employment. Perfect. Now let's talk about wage earners. Wage earners. So this one's a little bit, I don't want to say easier, but it, declining income. If you were at your same job as you were in 2020, in 2021 you have declining income, that's going to be an issue. Um, if you're in your same job, same position, and all of a sudden you're just working less hours, it looks like you are, you're having problems, right? Are you potentially, the questions on a writer's ask, are you gonna get laid off? Like, what, why are you working less hours? If you just went from full-time to part-time, we can probably talk about that and address that and use those, that new income. But if you're in, your hours just are getting cut, questions in underwriting. Um, if you have a new job, let's say you worked somewhere in 2020 and 2021, you got a new job and you're making a dollar less an hour, that's really not gonna be such a big issue as far as a declining income situation goes. But something to keep in mind, if you've had the same job, commission is a big one. If your commission is declining year over year, your bonus income is declining year over year, your overtime income is declining. Um, those are things that are going to you know, cause us issues in being able to use that type of income potentially, depending on how much the decline is and what the decline was for. So just be, be prepared to answer questions. It's always a good time to talk to your lender about that when you're submitting your income documentation. So a lot of times we don't find that out until we order a verification of employment and then all of a sudden we're like, what happened? Um, especially when it comes to like commission and overtime income because your W-2 won't break that income out for us. So while overall you may have similar income, it could be that your salary component got higher and your commission component got lower. So sometimes those are just good things to talk to your lender about and have that handiest if you make those types of income. So really the bottom line I think is, you know, those open lines of communication, talk with your lender, let us know, um, because a lot of times we're going based on what you put on your application for that pre-qualification letter that we're sending out. So once we get, like Shannon talked about earlier, additional documentation, we start to see some red flags, then we start really spinning up to truly answer the right, get the right questions out to make sure, is this declining? Because as she said, it can be a problem. So lots of intricacies in there. The biggest thing is let's talk about it, but get with your lender and uh, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, for sure.